My name is Matthew Alford. I'm a researcher at the University of Bath. I'm going to Washington DC to investigate a particular collection of material in Georgetown University Library. It shows correspondence between uh, the Department of Defense and Hollywood producers. And it will show, hopefully, how the Department of Defense has tried to change major Hollywood movies. I want to do two things when I'm there. I want to find two particular things. Number one, I want to see if there's any examples of films or TV shows that have previously, no one knew, uh, were affected by the Department of Defense at a script level. That's one thing. But the second thing is, because I've been researching this for several years, and I know already that there are thousands of productions that have been affected by the DOD, I also want to know if the paper trail is actually still there. Is there uh, are the files in this collection complete? Because there's been a great deal of uncertainty about whether that collection, which should be authoritative and comprehensive, whether there is actually the proper material there. And if it's not there, why isn't it there? So, coming back from Washington DC, I've been to the library at Georgetown, and this is what I found. There were some examples of scripts and correspondence between the Department of Defense and Hollywood producers on films and TV shows that we previously hadn't known uh, had been affected by the Department of Defense, which is quite exciting. They were fairly, well, one of them was a fairly obscure show, uh, a TV show called Puller, which I'd never heard of. Um, one of them was Pensacola, um, a, which was always set on a military base uh, in the late 1990s, about 100 episodes made. So one would kind of have guessed that Pensacola would have been uh, a Department of Defense supported production, but no one knew it before. So that's quite important. Um, and the correspondence that we have for that in the archive at Georgetown is really quite extensive as well, so we can do things with that material. Uh, and then there was a sh TV show called Home Improvement, which um, is quite well known. I've never seen it, but my co-author on National Security Cinema, Tom Secker, uh, is a fan of Home Improvement. And there was some Department of Defense support for that script and some script changes that were made. So that's interesting, and a few other bits and pieces as well. The other thing that came out of the trip was that we saw all of the, or many of the files uh, for these films that we know have had extensive Department of Defense correspondence, things like uh, Independence Day and Black Hawk Down, um, License to Kill, Tomorrow Never Dies and so on. But most of the material for almost all of those productions was not there. We don't quite know why, um, but for some reason, persons uh, or a person has gone through that material and for one reason or another has taken it away, uh, the majority of it away, uh, so that researchers cannot follow that trail very easily at all. I asked the library to clarify what had happened, but they were pretty mystified by even how the collection had even come to be in the first place. So there's something still of a mystery there. And I'd say for one reason or another, we're still in a position where the, uh, the material to substantiate the uh, existence of the propaganda apparatus in uh, the entertainment system of the United States is fragmented and often missing, even though we know that it exists. Some form of censorship at the least.